Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to episode 49 of Tales from a Retro Gamer. Be sure and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be doing a very special episode next week, episode 50. But today's is going to be pretty cool too because I'm going to be talking about Castlevania II Simon's Quest, a very divisive video game. Some people swear by it, but I was super disappointed by it because I absolutely love the original Castlevania and Castlevania II was just too different. It took way too much of a left turn. So let's talk about that. Now, many of you know, I got my uh, NES for Christmas in 1987. It was a gift from my brother, and I was super excited about it because the NES was such an advance in terms of graphics and sounds and controls over previous systems like the Atari and ColecoVision. Blown away by the NES, I was super excited to have it. I loved playing Super Mario Brothers, and I was glad to play uh, Hogan's Alley at home. I loved that in the arcades. Duck Hunt was cool. Loved a lot of those early NES games, especially Super Mario Brothers and Castlevania. Now, I got Castlevania not long after I got my NES because I had heard great things, and I absolutely loved the, you know, the universal horror monsters, basically, that were in it, like Dracula and Frankenstein's monster. I love battling the Medusa heads, and I love the whip that Simon Belmont wielded. What a great weapon that you could extend with power-ups, and you could get other weapons as well, like the, you know, the arcing axe. Just such a great game. What a great action game, and it was just a big, massive adventure at the time. Absolutely loved Castlevania. Straightforward, linear action game, but it did have some, you know, sort of adventure elements. Just a fantastic game. Great platformer, great action game. Now... There was a lot of hype for Castlevania II. Um, it released in December of 1988, and in the September slash October issue of Nintendo Power, it had an incredible cover, surprisingly um, graphic cover for Nintendo. It was Simon Belmont standing there with Dracula's decapitated head. Really great cover, a lot of hype for Castlevania II. I was certainly excited about it. And I picked, I got it for Christmas of 1988. So a year after I got my NES, um, I got Castlevania II, which I was super excited about it. And then I started playing it. So Castle, the original Castlevania, I loved it so much that I beat it just, you know, within a week because I played it so much and I loved it and I beat it again and again and again. Just a great game. Castlevania II, I, after playing it for a while, I kind of put it down because I just didn't care for it that much. Now, Castlevania 2, it, uh, like, there's some similarities to the original Castlevania, obviously. You've got, you know, graveyards and castles, obviously, by the title. You know, you do, once again, Simon Belmont wields a whip, and he climbs stairs, he battles the wolfman and the mummy, you know, so you got the horror thing going. But it's a fetch quest, and it has RPG elements, it's non-linear, you're exploring, you're on a quest to collect Dracula's body parts. You talk to townspeople, you buy items like daggers, throwing knives, stakes, and better whips. It's not just a matter of picking up power-ups. You have to buy these items, and you gain experience points like an RPG. It, to me, all this seemed just overly complicated and kind of convoluted. Now, I love The Legend of Zelda and Metroid, also nonlinear games with RPG elements. But I did not love Castlevania 2. You had to grind to collect hearts, and um, and if you died, if you lost all your lives, you lost all your money and experience, and it was just a confusing to me, uh, frustrating game. There were fake blocks you could fall through. Um, you could just fall. You could just walk it along and fall right through the floor. The clues weren't always obvious. They were rather cryptic. And they were, you know, clues don't have to be super obvious. You know, you want to figure out a puzzle or a riddle. But these were too cryptic, at least for me. There were misspellings in the text. You know, when you're talking to villagers, and it was just a frustrating game. Now, I know people that absolutely love Castlevania II and that will swear by it, and it's still their favorite game in the Castlevania series. And it did lead to some really, I mean, it basically began the Metroidvania uh, subgenre um, that sort of melded uh, elements of Castlevania and Metroid, and it was sort of the precursor to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which I absolutely love, one of the greatest 
with you know it's next to Castlevania three, uh, Castlevania uh, Symphony of the Night is probably my second or third, probably my third after Castlevania three and the original Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation is right up there. A great game and Castlevania two sort of you know was a precursor to that title, but I just didn't care for it too much. Anyway, so when you get a new game for Christmas, even if you don't like it that much, you're going to play it. And so, um, my brother-in-law came over. He, you know, I've mentioned him before. He's the guy that uh, we owned a comic book store together. We used to play computer games together. I would go over to his mom's house, and uh, she had a great game room set up. She recently passed away, June Davis, so rest in peace, June. Great woman. She was really interesting. She was always way up on technology and everything. And she had a game room in her house with old computers set up and with an Atari 2600 set up and all that. Really cool. So anyway, me and my brother-in-law spent a lot of time gaming together. We played a ton of ColecoVision, Rocky Super Action bo Boxing, some epic battles. And so he was my gaming partner for a long time. We did a lot of two-player alternating, two-player simultaneous. We got stuck two hours into Akari Warriors. You know, we've got a lot of great video game stories to tell. Well, late one night after I got Castlevania 2, he came over, you know, the family came over, him and, you know, um, his wife, who is my sister, you know, they were over and we were playing some Castlevania 2. This was not long after I got it. And I was, it was late at night. I was super sleepy, but I was intent on getting some jo enjoyment and value from this game that I had got for Christmas. And so I'm playing it, and I'm frustrated. I don't know where to go, which way to turn, what to do exactly, because I don't have patience for these kind of games typically, unless they're extra special, like Metroid or Legend of Zelda, and a few others. But um, I'll, I'll, you know, to review, to wrap my books and everything. I, I do like I played the heck out of Hydlide for the NES just to review it, but I hated it. <laughs> anyway, get back to Castlevania Two. Frustrating game, and so my brother-in-law is, is sitting there beside me. You know, he's watching me play, and I am really sleepy, and I don't have the best sense of direction anyway. So he's telling me which direction to go, where I've already been, what to do next, and all that kind of stuff. And so I ended up getting some enjoyment out of Castlevania II, Simon's Quest, and I still have my original boxed copy here in really nice condition, and um, so I ended up having a fairly entertaining night, just hanging out with my brother-in-law, you know, munching M&Ms or whatever, and um, playing Castlevania too, because he would tell me where to go, what to do, uh, what to avoid, you know, and we got pretty far into the game that night, but I was I, ultimately we bailed because I was really sleepy, and it, it wasn't my favorite game anyway, but we had a decent time just hanging out and playing that game, as we did so many other games. Really cool, my brother-in-law, Mike. Shout out for helping me get quite a bit of the ways through uh, Super, um, Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. Now, not, you know, after that, when uh, Castlevania III come out, came out, Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse, this went back to the original Castlevania formula, more far more linear than Castlevania II, just a fantastic game. It has even better graphics than the original Castlevania, and it's just probably even a better game than the original Castlevania. This is probably my favorite game in the series. Absolutely love it. So that was um, awesome that Castlevania III came back strong with just another great Castlevania uh, game after the disappointment of Castlevania II. Um, what do you think about Castlevania II, Simon's Quest? Did you play it back in the day? Were you disappointed about it? Or were you excited about it? Let me know in the comments. Or just, have you played it recently since? Have you heard about what a bad game it is or what a good game it is? And, you know, from some technical standpoints, it is a quality game, but it does have its flaws, which were definitely obvious to me. All right. As many of you know, my NES Omnibus, my forthcoming book, was recently successfully funded on Kickstarter. Currently, I have extended... Um, pre-orders over on Indiegogo. I'll put a link in the description for you. And as part of the Kickstarter perks, uh, I got YouTube shout outs. So let me do a couple of those real quick. Uh, Shinra Games, S-H-I-N-R-A underscore games. On Twitter, you can find them at Shinra Games 2. Uh, check them out. I will put a link in the description. And there's another a guy named Darren Hupke is working on a book called Sony's PlayStation. It's a visual guide 
to the PlayStation and it's still on Kickstarter, I will put a link in the description as well. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I will see you guys next week when my 50th episode. Maybe in the comments you want to let me know what should I do for my 50th episode. All right, thanks a lot. We will talk to you guys later.